We saw in our last lesson the quality and personality that attracts. We must also understand the law of thought action, otherwise we'll be lost to people and things without any direct constructive thought which in itself is the power we use to create, otherwise we are acted upon against our will or with our will continue. The law of thought action and reaction is very important. We are continually reacting to people and things. <laughs> if we do not discern our thoughts, our actions, then we will always be caught up in the relative. We must see that relative things are relative things, and when we understand the relative, then we will more likely to understand that which is real in itself. No one can ever see the real. No one can ever see the real. It is beyond the mind of man. It is beyond the perception of the human mind, but we can see the relative. And when we see the relative, we will know that it is not real. It is but a manifestation of that which is invisible. Therefore, we see that the invisible that is unseen is greater than that which is seen. In ordinary everyday life, people without understanding this law are mostly acted upon against their will. There is a seesaw movement going on all the time. One moment we act with our own will, the next moment we are being acted on against our will. This is truly ignorance. To understand this thoroughly, I will try to explain to you what the masters know in regard to this very important matter. I told you in our last lesson that the infinite self is the only self. Being infinite, therefore there is only, there is only the infinite self. That's all. Now where does your self come in? Yourself comes in because you recognize yourself as separate from the infinite self. But if you then lose this separate self, you work, as it were, without interruption, without resistance. You work as if the Father was doing the work for you. You no longer struggle. These anxieties pass away. Anxieties that belong to the occupation, anxieties that belong to the social system, uh, anxieties belong to the economic system, anxieties belong to the health and ill health, anxieties that belong to everything in human nature, because it is relative. If you then see that beyond this relative is real, although it is not seen, it must be, and it is that which you are aware of with your inner senses, and not that which you are aware of with your outer senses. The outer sense which you see and feel and touch through your senses are registered upon your brain. Even what you are seeing and feeling and touching and hearing, you do not know what it is. But when you with your inner sense, Sense this reality and know that it is and behind all creation, this reality exists as that stable, unconditioned, and perfect thing. And therefore, that the only self, there can be no other but the infinite self. Therefore, the infinite self must create everything within himself. Therefore, he must be in every one of us. 
There can be no space in which the infinite self does not exist. Which means that life in its fluidic state must be everywhere. We live and move and have our being in him. I want you then to recognize this divine reasoning so that you can cast out of your mind those things that irritate you and cause anxiety and therefore cause those emotional habit patterns that begin to express themselves out in the organism through the nervous system and when we recognize at once that divine reasoning is the truest source of all reasoning because you're reasoning with a, an awareness of that which is behind all things. Science has proved that electricity in its fluidic state is everywhere and fills all space. This fluidic energy, science says, is ether. Therefore, ether and space are synonymous to the scientist when dealing with this most important aspect of life. The scientists say that either this, either this electricity is right through the whole universe. It is the ether of space. And by means of generators, which the first scientist found that by two wheels moving in an opposite direction brought a current of electricity, a current of something he could not understand. He did not know where it came from, but he found the law that one wheel and another, one disc and another disc moving in an opposite direction <coughs> created an energy. Where this energy came from, he did not know, and we do not know today except that it comes from the atmosphere or it is ether in of space. The electronic action of space <coughs> transformed by the means of generators into a fluidic substance that you have never seen. You have never seen it. You do not know what it is, but you use it every day of your life. <laughs> Therefore, ether and space are synonymous to the scientists when dealing with this most important aspect of life. Now, the masters also say there is everywhere a substance which they call prana. And a practical course of instruction is given to selected pupils for the control of this universal energy. And when provisioned, they are given the title of pranayama ana. But as this is highly complicated, I intend to reduce this instruction into simple explanations of the fundamentals for you to understand. The controlling of this, what we call prana, is a very complicated affair and requires a great deal of various practices so that the mind becomes active and the consciousness, in fact, can direct this prana in any way the consciousness wishes. But before it can be done, the consciousness becomes aware of that this such thing exists. And it must be positively aware that such a thing exists. Otherwise, it can never control it. <clears throat> we live in a sea of universal energy and we continually absorbing this fluidic energy and discharging it again in the form of thought or directed energy which can be used for any purpose we please. In a similar way, this energy is absorbed from the atmosphere by generating stations and then discharged in the form of a portion call it electricity, which we can also use any way we please. So this same energy that is in the universe in which you live and move, you absorb this energy, this fluidic energy, and by transforming it, you transform it into thought, action, and reaction. It is, as it were, neutral in nature. It is, it is that which moves in any way you, that you want it to do. If you want 
this substance to create a condition in your body that is unhealthy, it will do so. If you want it to create a healthy state, it will do so. For the simple reason that these thoughts that you create are thoughts in your mind. They are images. Whether they are image of health or ill health, they are both the same. An image of health and an image of ill health is just the same. They are both images. The one is fighting the other all the time. That is the relative state. But the master gets out of the relative state for he sees those two images that he created himself. If he is caught up in the fight with these two images, then he suffers. <clears throat> but if he can discern those images and stand apart from them and understand them, he is not affected by them because he knows he can control this fluidic energy that is neutral in nature. It will flow into any avenue you directed to do so. That is the law. That's why you have been given all power in heaven and on earth. Just then the same energy is transformed into electricity. You transform the same energy into thought power, action and reaction. When we set in motion a thought, <coughs> we often do not realize that we have set a motion in motion, a current of life into action, and we virtually become generators of this force. Now, in what I have to say lies the great secret the masters use, and I have been trained in them by them myself, and although this training has been given to me with the understanding not to reveal the nature of it, except when the appropriate occasion arises, I feel that the occasion has arisen. You being my students, you should become aware of the fundamental facts underlying this science, and I am not violating any rule in revealing these to you. We have just seen that the universal self is the only self. This self being individualized, <coughs> as you and me, in the universe, in the universal self, it is therefore the universal self, but few are of they aware of this truth. No, you're not, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The individualized self. When the individualized self acts on its own, independent, not realizing the source, then it's, it is brought up against all sorts of troubles. But when that individual self recognizes the source of its own being, <coughs> knowing that there is an intelligence that is working through it, that individual then says to itself, this way, I am myself am nothing. It's the spirit of the Father within me that doeth the work. Therefore, the universal self becomes aware. Awareness not of separation, but awareness of unity. An awareness of an intelligence that is greater than the self, greater than the, uni than the individual self. An intelligence that knows how and when this individual completely is aware of this, then the individual gives expression to the whole. So the absolute begins to manifest through the individual. That is the purpose of the creation of the individual. So that the consciousness of God could manifest through the consciousness of man. And through the consciousness of man, the consciousness of God could manifest now. In that then, there was the awareness of the Master in all that he did was that simple explanation of I and the Father are one. 
Now thought originates in the self and is the means of self-expression. If the thought originates through reaction to things external to the self, there is what is known as fear, anxiety, anger, jealousy, etc. All these feelings which surround the thought gather together the particles of energy, which often become a solid mass of matter, because matter is energy in the same, is the same thing in a different form. So, as science has proved to us, in this, and the scientific explanation they say is this, matter separated from energy does not exist. By the Father, one is the most powerful thought in existence. The mind is the vehicle of expression. And when there is a certain amount of inner realization, pure thought, there is a continuous subconscious flow. If you would like to call it this, because you are familiar with the term subconscious, a master seldom uses the expression because it is misleading and does not give the true interpretation of the inner working of the mind. Nevertheless, there is an automatic flow of energy continuously flowing out towards people and things. Think now what it means. There is a continual flow of this energy flowing out through you towards people and things. There is a subconscious activity continually working. You are unaware of it. But as your thoughts build up, so you create what is known as a personality. If that personality has the quality, then it attracts. If it has not the quality, it does not attract. If you are continually thinking negatively about yourself, you prevent this force from flowing through you. This is the magnet, this is a magnetic power in itself generated through your own consciousness, by your own thinking. If you are calm, peaceful, then you find that this energy flows through you in abundance, attracts everything to you. If you then act in the opposite direction, you get irritated, fearful, doubtful, then you find that this does not flow through you, and the attraction is minus. Please remember that this force is active in you every day of your life. There is an accumulated amount of this energy stored up in the soul and body, and continually attract more and more of this same energy from the universal pool automatically. When we think with this understanding, our thoughts are charged with this energy and have a desired effect on people and things. The adept never forgets his relationship to the Father, the Universal Self. Therefore, he is always surcharged with the Universal Life Force. Never forgets his relationship. <coughs> <clears throat> no matter what he is doing or where he is, whether he is in the company of thousands or in the company of one, whether he is engaged in anything, menial work, or engaged in the greatest, probably the most important work in the world, <clears throat> he is not in any other state except conscious of his relationship to the whole. That habit is established through practice. What you have to do is to learn how to govern and apply this force 
in your lives for the benefit of all and not only for the benefit of the individual self. For without this understanding, without this technique, this force is dissipated and is often turned against the individual without the individual knowing what is happening. Therefore, we cause the reverse effort in our own life, bringing about the things that we do not want, but actually the things we think, how we react. How do you react? What are your reactions? In your reactions, do they create in your mind a turmoil, a state of fear, a state of anxiety? In your reactions, to things and people, are you afraid you will not get this, you will not get that? When you want something, the very image grows up in your mind that you haven't got it. And that you haven't got it becomes more and more a force and obliterates that the idea of you of having it. Therefore, you see, having and not having are images. Health and sickness are images. <clears throat> Good and evil are images. All these things are images in your own mind and belong to the relative. But there is that which is perfect in itself, who is not conditioned in any way that is not an image, that has nothing opposing it, it is in itself, complete in itself, that is the reality in you. Then your thinking begins. If your thinking then begins with your knowledge of this relationship to the whole, so shall your thoughts be tinged with that power, and therefore you'll be generating the great energy of the universe in your life. <coughs> Most people find themselves at variance with themselves. This conflict is the worst form of depletion and causes much more misery in the form of illness and mental depression, etc., than anything else. We saw in our last lesson how one can, one who had equality in personality attracted love, friends, success, health, etc., surely then a knowledge <coughs> of the scientific law underlying human relationship is of greatest importance to you. Thou shalt then have thy delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. Job 22, 26. This is the inner confidence that nothing can shake, no matter what the outer may be. Remember the real creative power of the self is in the realization of the greater self. And remember again, it's the Father, the greater self, that does the work. I can of mine own self do nothing. Jesus said, you find that in John 5, verse 30. If he said that, what about you? But you think you can do everything. That's how it appears in the sun. That you take upon yourself to do everything by yourself. And you think when you're doing it that you're alone. Now I never do. Whatever I am doing, I am always aware that the Father is doing the work. Be at peace. Then I am at peace. That inner peace that is permanent in me rises to the surface. That inner peace that is permanent in you shall rise to the surface. <coughs> Therefore, <coughs> there is freedom. <coughs> freedom comes when you take off the brakes. You put on the brakes. You put life in a cage. You create your own prison bar. Your emotional stresses and strains create habits which affect the nervous system and are pictured in the form of various troubles. <coughs> these tensions that create these have these emotional 
reactions cause tension in the inner structure of the body and in the outer. The muscles become tense. The muscles around the blood vessels become tense. Nerve centers become inhibited. <coughs> and therefore, the flow of life does not take place through the body and all sorts of troubles begin. Misbehavior is set up in the cerebellum. And this misbehavior begins to express itself in the form of some trouble through the nervous system. Tension. 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 What is the opposite of tension? A relaxation. Take off the brakes. Take off the brakes. Take off the brakes. And what happens when you take off the brakes? This misbehavior in the cerebellum changes. No longer has it any misbehavior because you consciously take off the brakes that you put on unconsciously. You unwind these misbehavior patterns that are working through your body and therefore nature comes in and takes a hand and the Father does the work. Take off the brakes, I say, and let the God do his job. He wants to work through you Take off the brakes. <coughs> I'll ask you the following, and be honest in answering to yourselves, yes or no. Do you take a negative attitude towards life? Are you always complaining that life is hard on you? Do you have that God has forgotten me feeling? If this is so, then you are unwinding the spring of life instead of winding it up in your own soul and body. You are creating those tensions that sure shall create a misbehavior in the cerebellum and through your nervous system shall have picture in some organ of your body. When you are in a calm, peaceful state of mind, the universal energy flows towards you and gives expression to itself. Therefore, you become filled with the forces of life. The adept speaks always to the point, and what he says, he means. Examine your own mind and see what is there. Then you will find what sort of mind you have. You will see whether you are putting on the brakes, whether you are creating those emotional habit patterns, whether this misbehavior that is setting up through your cerebellum is manifesting in your organism, and when you become afraid of it and you are fearful of it, then you see the vicious cycle is created. First of all, you have an emotional reaction. You come to become tense. The habit pattern is begin to move and create. What happens to you then? Then you feel the result of it. And then you become afraid of the result. <coughs> Not knowing how it came about. That's the vicious cycle. How many of you have become well when I have taken the brakes off, how easy it is for you to come become easy when the brakes are taken off. And well, you keep those brakes off. By divine reasoning and understanding. Then well, that next time is very useful to acquire in this calm and serene mind that these will be given later on when we come to that part of the course. At present, it is most necessary for you to acquire the fundamental truths underlying this great subject of human relations. Again, I ask you some definite questions. Are you morbid and gloomy? Are you a drag on the other passion's happiness? Are you always calling on others to hold you up? Do you say you are misunderstood? Are you full of grievances? Are you a grumbler? 
Do you always depend upon others and never upon yourself? Do you always seek flattery and irritate if you do not get it? Unless you know whether or not you are doing these things, you can never deal with them properly. You are putting on the brakes all the time. Yes, putting on the brakes all the time. You have to be honest with yourself and do not merely skim the surface. If you come across a person like the above, you must not be affected by this type, but try to understand them. If you become irritated, then you lose that quiet confidence that attracts the universal power to you. Try and transfer mentally your feeling of quiet peace and power to such a one, and by doing so you will do him and her and yourself a great service. Then, what is that you must remember? Your relationship. Oh, your relationship. To the whole. Yourself. That relationship to the infinite self. Therefore, when always in doubt, <coughs> it will lead you into pasture green. It will lead you out of difficulty. You will know what to say. You understand that love is the greatest power in the world. And a little love goes a long, long way. A long, long way. It is unwise to criticize such a person, for they are really ill through ignorance of the law of cause and effect. To be the healer, be the healer and not the critic. Criticism to be of any value, must be first turned against yourself. Apply this rule when you feel that you would like to criticize others. So at any time, when you feel you want to cry, criticize another individual, turn that criticism against yourself. And you will no longer criticize another individual, and you will free yourself. You'll be able to free yourself and take off the brakes that you'll allow the Father to do the work. It's very simple. There is nothing startling about it. All I say, just put into practice what I have and see for yourself the results. Without a true understanding of the law of action and reaction, you're unliable to become depleted yourself. This is always the safeguard against negative reaction in human relations. In human relations. We are in contact with people all the time. Human relations is the most important thing in your life. Know how to act. Know how to be. Be a helper and not a drag. Your human relations are most important for the simple reason that you can never get away from people. And in fact, you should never try to get away from people. Nor try and run away from people. Because you would then be running away from yourself. <coughs> and that is another impossibility. And when you want to escape anything, or escape an individual of some kind, you know that you are trying to escape from yourself. Then turn criticism towards yourself and see what you are doing, and you will take off the brakes. You will become free. Life will no longer be in a cage, and you will find the most glorious thing in the world. The strong passion does not bend his grievances, nor does he bluster or threaten. He leaves that to the weak, who wish to be thought strong. 
It is not necessary for the king or queen to go around telling people, I am a king, I am a queen. Everyone knows that. So does everyone know instinctively the song from the wind. But your strength does not lie in your staff. It lies in that relationship you have to the whole. Your relationship you have to each other. It reminds me of a verse in Luke. I think it's the 14th chapter, the 26th verse. <laughs> And it says, goes something like this. If you would come to me, you must put aside your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brother, <coughs> and also your own life. Then only can you become a disciple of mine. Why did Jesus say these words? It's not that they say that you do not care for your father and mother, sister and brother, wives and children. But it is meaning he's showing that these things are relative. These are the relative things of life. But he is speaking from the Christ principle. And it is perfectly true. <laughs> you can never become a disciple of the Christ until you have put off the relative. Until you have recognized the relative. Until you have put it aside. That's what the master did. How few people can understand his words. And when they read this, they are puzzled. One moment they say, he tells you to love and fail. Love you. Honor your father and your mother. Love each other. Then he says, put these things aside. But then he says again, he brings the whole thing to my mind as the crux of the whole. The whole. He who does the will of my father is my mother, my sister, my brother. Think from the Christ the principle in you. Act from the Christ principle. Then you won't see the relative of what it is. <coughs> he saw the relative, otherwise you couldn't speak about it. In fact, you can only speak about the relative. You can't speak about the truth because you don't know what it is. But if you can discern the relative and see that it is not true, then you will realize it. Perhaps that's Greek. Some of you. At the same time, try and remember what I'm saying, and you will find how true it is. You have the power to subdue your circumstances if you hold the attitude of mind gained through the proper understanding of the law of cause and effect, or action and reaction. Some admit failure from the beginning. They say it cannot be done. By themselves they can do nothing. But with God all things are possible. I hope you are now beginning to see the meaning of action and reaction. When this is thoroughly understood, your condition becomes the starting point. For positive action, pure action, your liabilities become your assets. No matter what condition you have, there is ill health. Back of this, or back of this. It's true. It is true. <laughs> that condition becomes a starting point for positive action. Pure action. Your liabilities become your assets. 
The fact that you must remember, the fact, a fact that you must remember is not to bestow too much attention upon a condition or seek simply of another in regard to it. You only make it a further burden. Wise counsel is the thing you need. You must face these things boldly. Then you will find that they will be your stepping stones and not your stumbling stones. Everyone who is here tonight is here because of that condition that made you seek, made you ask, made you know. And it has been opened unto you. He who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and he who knocks is opened unto him. That is why your conditions have been and have been your assets because this led you to the understanding of that which is greater. You must accept this type of thinking with the spirit of a true pioneer. It offers unlimited possibilities more valuable than any previous experience has led you to imagine. A new world will open before you, giving up its hidden secrets. How wonderful it is. And immediately we begin to recognize this great truth. It is a continually unfolding. The things you do not know today, you shall know tomorrow. The things you cannot know tomorrow, you will find opening up into you later on. There is a continual unfoldment of this knowledge and wisdom. Whenever you take off the brakes, when you put on the brakes, not only do you stop the flow of this divine energy, this divine intelligence expressing itself through your own consciousness, revealing itself to you, but all its glory, all its knowledge, all its wisdom, in your own consciousness, that which will be revealed is this. The whole of the relative universe will be known to the consciousness of it. But that which is behind creation and the why will remain a secret in the infinite consciousness. And that shall be eternal. Even the angels of heaven Jesus said, the time no one knoweth, neither the angels of heaven, but the Father for me. I am convinced that we shall know the how of everything. That's the wisdom. But why God? Even if we ask that we shall find. If Jesus is the greatest man of the world, then no, no man knoweth, neither the angels in heaven, but the Father of God. <coughs> Therefore, it is not the why of things that you must ask for, but the how. And I am content to know all this, that the infinite self being perfect in himself, he knows all things and everything he does must be perfect. I am quite content, as even as the master was, to go upon the cross and yet to fulfill that same destiny 
to take it upon myself to fulfill it, even if it is an ordeal. If it is the Father's will, I know then that it must be perfect. I don't know the why of it, but He does, and I am satisfied. Because He is eternal, ever present. And being eternal and ever present is complete and perfect, and knows all. <laughs> so you must accept this type of thinking with the spirit of a true pioneer that offers unlimited possibilities more valuable than any previous experience has led you to imagine. A new world will open before you, giving up its hidden secret willingly. We can profit by others' success and failure, but fundamentally, we must train ourselves to use our own mental equipment free from all outside influences. You can never be the copy of another because you are all different. If you try to imitate or copy another individual, then you will be a failure. The originality God created within you is his own expression in you. And you must never forget your relationship to him. Then everything you do shall be original. It is not what another person can do or another person has done. This way or that way. It is what this understanding, this wisdom, which in itself is true expression, will do for you. This new education can only be acquired by becoming conscious of our mental equipment and of that which is hindering us from using it efficiently and effectively. And what is it? What is this that is hindering us from using it efficiently and effectively? You know pretty well what it is. We cannot obtain this knowledge via conventional education, nor with a mind that is dominated by habit and precedent or biased to conformity, for it is entirely contrary to the habitual type of thinking. And you know that to be true. The world is steeped in chaos because of that habitual state of thinking. <clears throat> that new type of thinking has not yet arisen in the minds of men and women throughout the world. Only a few here and a few there. Yet you have a man regard in the in the progress of the world. Because you are the There must be a new arrangement of thoughts and new methods of using the mind. <coughs> this is essentially simple. <coughs> and both the untutored and the tutor, even the so-called highly educated, must learn to apply. It is a new type of thinking and understanding that is capable of carrying forward all the results of the past into a scheme of life which will establish a new day for all. And that is coming. The systems under which we are acting at the present time is entirely erroneous. But these systems exist because you and the world has brought them in. And there's no need for you to fight them. There's no need for you to quarrel with them, for you are the cause of them. You wanted them, you got them. If you struggle with them, you don't anywhere with them. The change must come within yourself. And only within yourselves 
when that change comes, then that change outwardly will also come, and the scheme of things will be different. But first of all, there must be a new arrangement of thoughts, new methods of using the mind. And this is essentially simple and to both the untutored and the tutored, even the so-called highly educated must learn to apply it. <coughs> Those people who are really proud of their intellectual attainments. How really stupid they are when you know the truth. That they are living in an illusion created by themselves. And you will see how stereotyped, how fixed are their ideas. Their mind is like a concrete slab, and that is truly ignorance. The world offers us glorious opportunities, just as the first pioneer began to make a place for himself, so must the same spirit of exploration be used again with the added advantages of all the knowledge that preceded us. So we take Everything a great step further into the requirements of the present. All the experiences of the past are not lost. They become stepping stones for the future. That is the present. And all your experiences, no matter what they are, are you stepping stones. We shall make a better and more enlightened world in which we live, and with it will come a new kind of education for the unfolding of a material world to fit the new knowledge and understanding in our human relations. The cause of effect, you cannot separate the material from the spiritual. You can't kind of separate the other from the inner. <coughs> the real manifestation of the one thing. If you're living in reality, you can see that which is relative. But you can never see that which is real, even while you're living in reality. But you can see everything as reality. And you will know how to use this relative world. And a new world will rise before you where you can manipulate and apply your knowledge and understanding and to bring about a true dispensation so that all shall live as God intended him to live, so that God himself will manifest to every soul. Take off the things that God do you. There is but one universe, one God, one principle of being, one mode of action, one true reason based upon truth, one in all, all in one. Benediction. <laughs> Through the night of ignorance and error, we pursue a false happiness. Our feet on the path of progress become bogged in the marsh of disillusionment. The receiving element of desire leads many to be smothered up in the bog of prosthetic. O oh, Divine One, light our path with thy true thoughts of progress, revealing our true relationship to one another. And to thee. Thy beacon light shines on the rock of truth, so that we may safely reach thy everlasting shore of peace and 